We've addressed uh, Georgia Tech's significant uh, personnel losses on offense coming up in 2014. The same holds for the defense as well. Six starters lost coming into the fall of 2014 for Georgia Tech. And this uh, football team we need to break down with uh, Joey Weaver from the Rumble Seat, uh, SB Nation's uh, Georgia Tech platform. Joey, thanks so much for joining us. Good to be back on, Mark. Yeah, so let's look at this defense. Uh, Jamia Thomas uh, from the defensive backfield led the team with 88 stops. I don't know if that's a good thing, but still, big-time playmaker there with 88 tackles, eight and a half tackles for loss, picked off a couple passes, even made three sacks from uh, defensive back position. Then uh, Jeremiah Tauchu with uh, 16 and a half tackles for loss. That was sixth in the ACC. He was second in the ACC with 12 and a half sacks, all-time leader of the school. Uh, so though that's just the tip of the iceberg in regards to the two most significant losses. So we're going to call on you to kind of restructure this entire defense for us. Definitely. So so we'll start with Thomas. Thomas was a, a huge playmaker uh, back there in the backfield, and as you said, led the team in tackles. Um, he he, re I, you know, I hesitate to compare him to a Troy Polamalu or something, but he he sort of does play a bit of a rover role where. He's, he's kind of all over the place. He'll make tackles out in the flats. He'll be playing deep zones. You know, he, as you said, got about three sacks rushing the quarterback. He kind of did it all. Um, probably, you know, the best corner that we've had, you know, in a few years. But uh, so his loss will be felt. He played both corner and safety. Um, I think, you know, the biggest returner they're going to have is actually a senior, Isaiah Johnson. He redshirted this year uh, after – trying to rehab an ACL injury, probably could have played most of the season, but it's one of those injuries you just kind of don't want to risk it, especially him being a senior, having some NFL potential. They just said, let's just shut it down for a year, take that redshirt season and come back next year. So Isaiah will be coming back to replace him at, at safety. Uh, the other guy in the, in the backfield that's going to be, that's going to be leaving, I guess has already left is uh, Lewis Young at cornerback. Um, Pretty good pass coverage, uh, maybe some NFL potential late in the draft or, uh, you know, in, in free agency, but um, he'll be replaced. There's a, there's a whole crew of people that are going to be fighting for that spot, probably led by Jamal Golden. Uh, you, you'll recognize that name, very good kick and punt returner who had four or five returns for touchdown in the last couple of years. Um, he had a, a shoulder injury last year, ended up, you know, missing most of the season, but He's going to be a pretty good cover corner to watch over there uh, in the defensive backfield. Uh, move up into the linebackers. You lose your strong side linebacker, Brandon Watts. Um, played safety and quarterback in high school. Very, very athletic. Um, he did a really good job covering the field. He was, I think, third on the team in tackles. Um, and so a, a real solid guy, again, probably late in the draft, if not probably free agency, that uh, he would have any NFL aspirations um, but a real solid guy. I, I'm really not sure how the whole linebacker group is going to work because they've got a lot of moving pieces there. Um, chances are you could see Anthony Harrell, uh, who really came on late in the year. He could end up over there at the strong side spot. Uh, the other you know, possibility is that they would move Quayshawn Neely from weak side to strong side and then let uh, P.J. Davis, the rising true sophomore, play at, at weak side you know, permanently. So... We'll see what happens. I, I don't really know exactly what the plans are, um, but it'll be interesting to watch. And then up front, you lose three of your four starters. Uh, as you mentioned, Jeremiah Tauchu, huge production, uh, really been a staple in the Tech defense the last few years. He was recruited by Al Groh to play 3-4 uh, outside linebacker, and in the move to the 4-3, he was kind of converted to defensive end. So he plays sort of a bit of a hybrid role there, and... Uh, Chances are he'll be second to third round of the NFL draft. Um, next to him, you had Euclid Cummings, a defensive tackle. Uh, pretty solid two-year starter. Uh, will be interesting. they got a really good crop of young guys coming in uh, that could replace him. Uh, you got a four-star guy, Francis Callen, coming out of Gwinnett County. Uh, he played the same high school that Ted Roof played at. Uh, you've got Justin Akins, uh, Darius Commission. Uh, there's, a, there's a number of people that could step up into that role, but Definitely will be a younger guy. Uh, Sean Green, I guess Jimmy Kitchen are also candidates there. Um, and then finally you go across the other side. You have uh, Emmanuel Dieke and Chris Crenshaw, both uh, fifth-year seniors, I believe, uh, playing the strong side defensive end uh, spot. And 
chances are he's going to be replaced by either a uh, either Kevin Robbins, uh, rising redshirt freshman, or um, incoming incoming um, incoming freshman. Well, not freshman. He's a transfer in from uh, George Military College. Started at NC State. Kendarius Whitehead is in the most recent signing class. Um, so it's going it's to be interesting to watch. Again, a lot of moving pieces. Not really sure where people will end up. Um, but, again, going to kind of rely, similar to the offense, they're going to rely on some of the young guys that we have high hopes for. And it's, it's a matter of whether they'll reach potential or not. Wow, it sounds like we've got some serious battles for position, uh, probably very deep into August, possibly. Absolutely, and that's kind of how Johnson has always operated things. Um, he, he really hesitates to, to name anybody a starter before they've really and truly earned it in his eyes. Um, and he's also the kind, he's not afraid to, to name someone way out of left field. You know, if they really come out and earn it, he'll, he'll put them out there and let them play. So um, definitely going to be a lot of position battles, and, and I would be willing to bet that the depth chart coming out of spring practice will probably not be the same one that you see on opening uh, opening day here in the fall. All right, Georgia Tech trying to stay relevant, trying to find some playmakers on both offense and defense to stay with the likes of Florida State and Clemson and on down the road with Louisville coming into the ACC as well. Joey, uh, again, spring football is right around the corner and would love to have you on to break down this defense uh, when we know a little bit more and when you can sort out all these names. I jotted down about 12 or 15 names that you ran by that are looking for playing time, so it should be interesting to see what uh, Tech has for us uh, in the fall. That's uh, Joey Weaver. He writes for From the Rumble Seat. It's the uh, Georgia Tech Athletic site on SB Nation. Joey, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Mark. I appreciate it.